Welcome to another episode of Hiring and Empowering Solutions. My name is Molly McGrath, and I am the creator of this Office Altering Podcast. If you're a first-time listener, welcome. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. As always, you can check us out at HiringAndEmpowering.com. We are in for a treat today. We are going to be speaking about unresolved chronic stress and unoptimized leaders. I am so excited for today's conversation with Wiley McGraw. Wiley, you, I don't even know if I could do this justice. (laughs) Tell people about your background because it is extraordinary. And tell us a little bit about your backstory and what brought you to where you are today. Great, Molly. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me here. I'm I'm always stoked to have these types of conversations with motivated people like you. So I'm looking forward to diving in and accelerating some really good energy towards those that are listening and really shift things for them if uh, you know that's what they're looking for. So um, yeah, I, I have quite an interesting story. Uh, I, I think we all have an interesting story, but I look at the fact that when I came into this world, I was brought in with this very unique gift that I didn't fully understand until I got, I would say, into the military. And I'll start with this is I grew up a, a star athlete. My talent was um, cultivated by my father, who was a semi-pro ball player. I grew up around professional baseball players. So I pitched for, I would say, 14 years and my arm was my talent, but it was one hyper-focused skill that I spent my life uh, perfecting. And my dad was perfectionist with that. It was an incessant push uh, for me to be only that. And and if I wasn't that, then I was a failure. So uh, my household, however, aside from the stress of sports, because we all understand that when you're doing something so athletic or so high powered, there is going to be normal stress with that. However, the dynamic that I grew up in with a very staunch, stoic, unresolved family uh, from generations of pain and trauma, addictions, abuse, et cetera, that pressure did not allow me to feel like I was being the best version of myself. It didn't allow me to feel uh, good in my own skin. So I tried to create this world of um, happiness for myself until I could find a way to get away from that. And that pressure, that stress growing up, eventually pushed me away from the path of sports. Even though I was being coached by the pros, California Angels pitching staff, I was being scouted. Uh, I was always on the on, on the mound as a starting pitcher with any team that I was on. Uh, to me, that wasn't enough. And I decided to break away from what I was expected to be and how I was expected to perform. And I started to step into very un, uh, uh, unknown and very specific type of real world challenges, which is why the world of bull riding came knocking at my door. So talking about that sports growing up in that household, I pushed myself into these very scary positions to really challenge myself and unleash who I knew I was inside, but just didn't didn't really grasp as, as a young man. So I started riding bulls for five years and I found that world really allowed me to unleash more of the wild side of who I was. My warrior nature was being suppressed by my family. It was being told that it was wrong and bad. Um, And it was being held back from truly being optimized. And I didn't understand why everyone in my family was always pointing their stress and their frustrations at me. I felt like there's something, is there something wrong with me? And when I got into the world of bull riding, I felt this newfound freedom start to emerge. I was willing to face the unknown. I was willing to uh, face certain death potentially because bull riding is dangerous to really find more of my own power, more of my own potential. And eventually that just, it just got to the point where I was like, I wanted more, I wanted more challenge, more real world experience. And I joined the military from there and I became a combat infantry leader with the 101st airborne division, three tours overseas. And I found in the midst of combat in Afghanistan, this um, superpower, if you will. And I started to realize and connect the dots. Okay. This is why I was brought into this world. And this is the things that I'm starting to see when it comes to performance as a team, as individuals, I started to see the differences in stress and how it was actually hindering people's potential, why people were making the mistakes they were, why we weren't getting the best results possible, et cetera, and how to become a better leader through that innate ability so that I can optimize my team myself, go to war, come home alive, and actually exceed expectation from the commanders, et cetera. So my life journey was always about who am I and Am I operating as the best version of me outside of what's expected of me and what's put on me by society, the the conformity? I remember my mother saying one time, 
you've got to conform. And I told her I would absolutely not conform. There's absolutely no way I'm going to, it doesn't even feel right. It doesn't even make sense to do that. But that was their own defense mechanism and their own uh, feeling of comfort and safety in that control. And I broke away from that and really found out I was capable of so much more. So the military really unleashed more of my superpower and my gift. And I started to cultivate that. And I started to find out that I needed to go inward and actually resolve all of those, un, uh, I would say those unresolved chronic stresses from my life experiences that created those undetectable patterns of doubt, fear, and cautiousness that impacted my ability to perform. It held back my actual potential. And once I got to the place of self-mastery, I was able to then turn around and take that gift, build a business around that and start working with veterans and then eventually high-powered professionals, health professionals, celebrities, athletes became a referral based. This is the guy you need to know. This is why life itself is being altered. It's not a typical coaching thing. He's not your normal resource. And now I'm standing here after 13 years, I have worked with people from different industries like Wall Street and Hollywood, professional sports, um, of course, combat veterans, et cetera, personal development influencers, public figures. And I'm just that very special elite resource for those types of leaders who are looking to unleash all of their potential and, and actually optimize their lives lives right now in an accelerated fashion and be at the top of their game so that the impact that they are out in the world creating is exponential and highly sustainable. And it's not detrimental as we continue to experience in our society. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> and then some, yeah. oh my goodness. You know, I, you obviously you have a tremendous amount of self-awareness in addition to energy and, mm. you know, the term that people use motivation, what have you a few weeks ago, when you and I were speaking, you said something and I, I want you to repeat it. The okay. difference between like you and Tony Robbins, you know, Tony Robbins calls himself and, and this isn't a place of comparison, but you said something that really stuck out to me in regards to, can you, can you recreate it? Can you think of it? Are you, you're, you're talking about the, the idea of transformation versus transference, right? Yes. The energy that people, okay. Yeah. So uh, just to start, so you, so those that are listening can hear this is people like Tony call me. So that's, that is truly the type of, re I've been behind the scenes without a website and business card on purpose. My business is the, I would say the worst business model in a way. It's the <laughs> antithesis of your typical transactional reciprocal business uh, mode that we are all used to. So we grow this idea that this is how business is done. And anything that outside of that is weird and different. And that's fine. If I'm weird and different, great, but I'm successful because of that very reason. So go back to what you, you want me to recreate is, Real transformation itself, which has become a very bastardized word, especially mm. like organic has been overused for marketing. Yeah. Transformation is marketed as well. It's a um, talking point for people to buy into something. And when I talk about transformation, I'm talking about real metamorphosis from within, not the conceptualized ideas that things are changing, but real transformation comes from the, the dark, ugly corners, the places you don't look, the places you don't go or you don't see. Most, if not all coaches and consultants out there that are offering this hyped up high level stuff are actually only transferring their own motivational energy into their audiences to give them this false sense of, of movement. Now, some some of that does work. I, I'm not saying it doesn't have its place. Absolutely does. There is results to be had with those types of coaching, consulting, advising tactics. Nothing wrong with it. I'm looking at it from this place. If you want to be optimized, you have to break yourself away from the crutches of the quote, helping field, which is what those are. And you have to be willing to face your demons. I'm talking about the real unresolved nasty stuff that you have overlooked your entire life that you have chalked up to just being human. This is just the cost of being human, the cost of doing business. It's normal. Just grow up and get over it. And I look at it as like, no, when I was in the middle of, uh, of a war zone, I realized and, and it clicked. This idea that we need to suck it up and just get over it is what's actually hindering our power and potential from being fully optimized. We are dynamic. We are meant to be performing at the best of our, our abilities, not trying to figure out and chase our way to that. We're supposed to get there, but we don't have people willing to hold that space, create the environments put people through real world challenges because everybody wants to feel a sense of comfort and control as they're going through change. So they say, well, if it doesn't sound this way, if it doesn't look this way, if it doesn't feel this way, there's something bad with it. And I'm going, no, there's not. A therapist will tell you, you've got to let people be where they're at. 
Well, some people need to be where they're at so they can create, like you said with me, this newfound awareness first, ground yourself in that awareness and start taking action towards those things that really challenge who you are and allow you to actually erupt and bring out all of the things that stand in your way. If you think by carrying around all of that sludge, if you will, inside Mm. you is going to actually allow you to perform at the top of your game, no matter what level you're at. If you're a small business, if you're a high powered leader of an industry, or you're you're just a high achiever who's looking to make more money and have more impact. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you want to find the access to your best, that's where you need to go. So going back with Tony Robbins is, you know, I've met Tony, I've worked in his circles. I know all of those people. I was passed around in the personal development industry for like three years, working with a lot of those influencers, just individually, uh, one-on-one. It's, this is the guy that really transformed my life. This is, you want to know what I was doing. This is the guy. Tony is, his business is designed and what they do is to create entry level stuff for people who are looking to benefit and, and, and move their life in a better direction. That's good. But when you want to really do an optimized level of performance work, you have to go into the places you are unwilling to look at. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes, no matter what it feels like, looks like, or how it sounds to you to get there. Because what I put my leaders through it's almost like, oh my, you're doing what? Absolutely. Because I know exactly what you need. I can see the blind spots as you're even talking to me, as you're acting, your behavior, how you're showing up, the results of what's going on around you. Tell me everything I need to know about what's inside you and what actually needs to be faced head on and what needs to be erupted first so that you can then just accelerate to the top of your game and actually stay there on a consistent basis versus this up and down roller coaster ride. We have all chalked up to being normal. And that's not normal. It's transference when you're going to a concert like event, jumping around with people, hugging each other and getting excited. That's a dopamine high. You're just feeling this like mimicked nature and you take that energy home and it might last a little bit, but then it it dissipates. And where are you left? Well, I got to go buy another program. I got to go into another concert event. I have to find another guru to follow. And nobody actually knows who they are without all of that stuff occupying space and, and, and being on top of them. So I'm here saying, look, you need to discover who are you? Where is your real power derived from? And then when you can find out who that is, who you are, all the little aspects that you want to add into the coaching programs, the processes and systems actually accentuate you and are only beneficial to you. They're never something that you got to kind of try to figure out. Does that make sense? Oh my goodness. It sure does. One word I love that you said was sludge. And that just, (laughs) when you, I mean, I'm even thinking of it, like, you know, you think of pipes and what have you, and just corroding. And this whole, the roller coaster that you talked about for the 20, almost eight years that I've been working with, as you know, my clientele, their attorneys, Mm -hmm. highest addicted profession. Mm -hmm. In regards to, I mean, stress, talk about stress. Yeah. My goodness. But the unresolved chronic stress, you talk about the roller coaster. This is what I hear from them. I need to get off the roller coaster. Right. Now, typically they'll say cash flow, roller coaster, lack of leads. Yeah. They're all about the strategy. They're all about the business plan. They're all about that. Why I have a revolving door of this week alone, Wiley, I've received five emails. I'm not even kidding you that titled so-and-so quit. Yeah, of employees quit quitting. Right. Yeah. And this has nothing to do with the whole unemployment and all that. But no. when I look at the name of the attorney, it's associated to I'm like, this is not a new problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> this so, is a right. reoccurring problem. Right. And the problem is not you can't find good people. The problem is you. And these are people that would use the terminology. They wear it like a badge of courage that they're yeah. busy equals important. I think it was uh, Michael right. Gerber that yep. talked about that way back when. And they're constantly stressed and they feel like that is like, man, you made it. You're stressed. You're overwhelmed. You're they call freaking that success. Out. They call it success. <laughs> They call that's, it success. And that's, I, I love that you shared that because uh, many points popped out for me right there. Number one, we are so consumed with the idea that in order to become more, to, to do more, to have more, we need to keep adding into our lives more. 
We have a world that is built around this idea that, that consuming is the only way to grow. And I'm going, no, you have to actually start focusing on removal. Mm. See, it's like you said, the corrosion in the pipes. Consider this. If you had a backed up digestive system, but you kept eating food, you're going to destroy your organs. You're going to, you're going to hurt yourself from the inside. Now, now understand that you are more than just this physical body. Realize that there's so much more dynamic nature to who you are. Consider that if you don't remove in a balanced way, as much as you may be consuming, you're going to literally become this like bloated, overstuffed, stressed out, like you just said, version of yourself. And then your mind is going to compensate. That's the key word. That is the, mm. I would, yeah, that is the, that the true key word here. It's almost like, you're compensating. Most people, if not all, that succeed to that degree you're talking about, I've got the money, I've got the notoriety, I feel like I'm, I'm working hard, I'm doing 90 hours a week. They're really just compensating. They're not succeeding. Success should not be glorified because someone works like Elon Musk, 120 hours a week, gets no sleep, but is a billionaire. That's not success at all. I, I, will, I don't care who, anybody can argue with me all day long. I'll go in any show and I will literally hold that line. That is not success. You want real success, you should emulate. Who is someone at the end of the day? Are their relationships optimal? Are they healthy? Are they focused? Are they balanced? Do they have empathy? Are they living a life fully integrated with who they say they are, not what they portray in public? So go into your attorneys, the clients you work with, there is a badge of honor. I remember working with a firm and all of the, you know, the, the senior, I would say the senior partners, they thought the same thing. They're like, look, we're, we are, we're making tons of money. We are one of the top law firms in the country. They're like, what do we need to, why do we need to do anything different? I said, because I'm watching you literally fall apart right in front of me. I'm watching how your relationships are suffering. I'm watching how your performance is in fact wavering. You are, you could be so much more. You could be doing so much more if you understood how to do the removal first and focus on those things that are occupying space, those stresses. Now, last point, Molly, chronic stress are those unresolved things that you have carried your entire life from your life experiences. What you are saying to me, which I thought was beautiful, is you got the emails and people are having this reoccurring problems. Yeah. So what I discovered in the middle of my own experience with war was the two types of stress. You have acute stress and chronic stress. What you're explaining here is acute stress, the stuff that quote keeps happening to us no matter how much we think we have it under control or figured out. I even put a little whiteboard video together. It's on my LinkedIn page. It's even on my website as well uh, that talks specifically about that. And it gives these examples of if something is continuously reoccurring over and over again, similar, then that means you have unresolved chronic stresses that have not been resolved. They have not been addressed or eradicated. And until you get to the core of those things, you're going to experience, you might chalk it up as, well, my assistant forgot my papers to a very important event. And that's not good because now it's going to throw off the flow. Well, why do you think your assistant showed up that way for you? What's going on with you right now that you're not looking at that makes you feel the way you feel and literally create a scenario in which your assistant would forget papers. I know that's a small example. No, it's a seen great it. example. I've seen it or I've seen it where I've been brought into a merger, a multi-billion dollar merger. And I watched literally a business partner who literally didn't show up for the merger because he got it wrong on his calendar. I'm like, Why do you think your partner messed that up after all the years of working with them? And when we found out was their dynamic between the two of them was so chaotic that they can never get on the same page. And I'm like, and you literally threw away tons of money because of that. And they're like, well, I thought it was just like a coincidence or an accident. No, absolutely not. If we start going into the self-awareness aspect and really digging deep and finding out what we actually carry around does in fact create our situations and scenarios around us, especially if it comes to our focus and our attention and our work, you'll be surprised on how much is actually impacting the world around us and creating all the problems we face. It's inner volatility that literally impacts our performance. Not everybody else outside of me, you know, I'm the best of myself and these people out here are screwing up. No, why do you think you're around or associated with people that are screwing up? You, you have to look at you. You have to be willing to face your truth and people don't even know how to face their truth. I think the former CEO, Molly, real quick, from uh, the Girl, Scout, uh, Girl Scouts of America talked about it. We're taught all of our life how to do things how things should be done, but it's really the character and the, the nature of the leader that actually impacts performance and results. And I paraphrase that. 
but it's in one of my papers, Helping Versus Optimizing, which is on the bottom of my homepage. It's a real academic paper that I spent months writing to really help people understand the difference between helping and optimizing and what aspects of that are required for you to take it to the next level. And I think it's a great people, uh, paper for people to read to really grasp what you and I are talking about right now. Wow. Where, yeah. where can they find that? So, uh, I, you know, the time to erupt.com is an easy link for people to really okay. access, but it will take them to wileymcgraw.com. It's just a 40 link easier than spelling my name. Yeah. Uh, but it's on the homepage. So if they just click my, my name, uh, it'll take them right to the homepage from there. And at the bottom, they'll see, they can download it again. I don't yeah. collect email addresses. I don't need a community or a tribe for me. It's like, I'm providing real the next level insight and information and new found philosophy that really challenges the status quo. These are the pieces I'm putting out for people to really start delving into optimization. Cause that's what I'm about. <laughs> well, our readers, you know, they're high, uh-huh. high fact finders. They love research <laughs> and they will Absolutely. want to read that. So I wanted to make sure for a lot of times people are running or walking or driving, listening. Sure. So I want to make sure they can um, pinpoint that. You said so much. I love the example that you use of missing appointments on calendars. That's a common one, a real common one, not showing up with the right paperwork or paper. I get phone calls all day long about that. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's really go into the impact of that and give our people some some kind of food for thought or an exercise of what they can do to walk off this podcast and start really, truly looking at the areas where they have this, um, yeah. recurring nightmare. <laughs> yeah. It, it reoccurring nightmare. And, and again, that is, I'm a walking nightmare eruptor. So even my presence, my power, what I, I, I just show up really brings forth all of these unresolved things that people that uh, have any of the slightest intention to connect with my energy or what it is I'm talking about. So I want, you know, running, walking, exercising, whatever you're doing. And you take the time to read because you're right. They're voracious researchers and readers. Um, And I I am too. I love delving into different uh, articles and things that are out there so that I can start pulling out the blind spots of them and start challenging them and bringing new philosophy from that. And that's how I've lived my life is I'm finding philosophy about life and performance, human performance from my interactions in the world with relationships, watching human beings uh, interact with the world around them. And to go to your point, if they are dealing with reoccurring stresses constantly over and over again, and they keep thinking that somehow adding strategy or changing the way they approach culture or uh, who they're hiring is going to change that dynamic, they're sorely mistaken. And what I would say is if you're going to start any kind of change Right, right now, when you hear this and you're going to go back to your office, you're going to start leading your team in a different direction. What really matters is focusing on who you are and going into the depth of what is it that's in my life that I have not actually looked at first. Stop trying to add from the outside world and start going, what is going on within me? What's going on around me or within me that's affecting my ability to actually retain higher high quality talent, get people to show up on time. Because here's the thing. If somebody is just not naturally doing that when they're on your team, there's, there's some, there's a disconnect in the dynamic and the energy between you and your teammates. And I'll give you an example. So this help your, your, your people. I worked with a internationally recognized performance coach who uh, trains professional athletes. He, you know, he's a uh, kind of a, um, just a, a real powerhouse when it comes to uh, MMA and football and baseball, et cetera. And we met years ago. And I remember I did a group dynamic with my high performance meditation, which is a tool that I utilize in my relationship work with clients that really accelerates an eruption of sorts when it comes to a very specific stress we focus on. And I remember doing this for him and his, his team. And I can tell when they were in their meeting, how his team was just dead. There was no energy there. And I'm like, this hyped up guy over here who's pushing pro athletes to to the top of their game when it comes to their sport, but his team feels like a wet sock. And I'm going, there's something going on here and I'm watching this. And then when I came up and I gave them this insight, who I was, what I do, we did this session together and I met him again at an event, maybe a week or so later. And he came up and he goes, you know what? I got to tell you something. We were all confused for a little bit afterwards. And I said, that's good. Confusion means there's space being opened up for things to change. And he, he was like, oh, I never even considered confusion being that. I said, absolutely. That is another misconception that confusion is a problem. It's not. It means something is, it's giving you a place to learn something and really grasp. And if you're willing to open yourself to that, you will. And he goes, well, here's what happened. We were confused. 
then we all started kind of talking and all of my people started coming to me with their problems saying, here's the deal. I've been hiding this from you my drug addiction. I've been hiding this from you, my alcoholism. I've been hiding how I feel about you from you. I've been hiding. And everybody on his team said something of that sort. I've been hiding something from you. And he goes, what the hell is going on here? I knew something was up. I couldn't figure it out. I thought it was, I wasn't motivating you guys enough or wasn't paying you guys enough. And they're like, no, there is just all of this personal stuff going on in our life. And you are the place for us to point it at. And what ended up really solidifying the deal and understanding that it was that type of dynamic that was affecting his team's overall performance and his company, his pro athletes. He had a guy, a couple of athletes that ended up having problems at the gym training with him, a couple of pro, uh, pro football players who ended up actually ha- going into seizures and having all of these issues. And their wives were like, Hey, look, these guys have been hiding an allergy to certain food from you. And he's like, I need to know all these things. If I'm going to be your trainer and make you the best, the, tr- the, the moral of the story is, he was unaware that the personal lives were affecting the professional lives. He was unaware that these two are not mutually exclusive. And the reason why he couldn't get things to change from all of the work he was doing and how much energy he was pushing out was because he wasn't stopping to slow down to look at the truth of what is actually going on with those around him. He was so overconsumed with who he was and what he was doing that he did not pay attention to how his people were living their life. And what I, I want to close this thought up with is how well you live your life directly impacts your performance and those around you, period. Mm. So in that scenario, like it wasn't mm-hmm. the, the leader, the boss, the guy, um, it wasn't necessarily anything that he was doing other Wait, than the yeah. lack of awareness and the ability. Well, that's it. That's stop. what he was doing, right? He, he was... Yeah. He is so, you know, all about the mental toughness that he, again, we focus on so much mindset, 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 mindset. And I go stop with this incessant drive that the mindset is all that matters. Albert Einstein said it best. And I, I, I subscribe to this a hundred thousand percent is that the intuitive mind is a sacred gift. The logical mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that rewards the servant and has completely disregarded the, the gift. Wow. And the intuitive mind is not the logical mind. There's an energetic connection there to the heart, to who you are at your, at your core, the gut. And we are so unresolved as a society, as a whole, we have so much pain and trauma that has been passed down generation after generation that we have built this world around compensation. And then we have logically tried to circumvent the idea that it is compensation because we don't like the way it sounds or feels. And we say, well, that, that, this is what success looks like. And this is what failure looks like. And if we know how to like identify those steps, we can then break down everything into simple linear uh, steps, processes, and programs. And we can follow that. And that'll get us to a place of happiness and peace. And I'm, I'm, I'm out in the world going, no, you guys don't realize that guys and gals, you don't realize that steps are good when you want to cook a recipe. Steps are great when you want to build a computer. When it comes to human performance, when it comes to your potential, who you are as a dynamic being cannot be broken down into steps. You don't live mm. your life through steps. You're going to miss out on everything in between the steps and around the steps. So you're still creating limitation by following a linear systematic approach to who you are and how you perform in, in life and business. And I say, Back to that thing. This guy was unaware of his own limitations, which is what was creating blind spots for him to even see that his own staff was suffering and his athletes were suffering. And everyone was afraid to just authentically tell him the truth because he couldn't give them the capacity or the space to feel completely free, which then restricts performance, hinders team function, destroys culture, and limits your capacity to create monetary success and notoriety. Wow. Mic drop right there. <laughs> you, uh, so our listeners, they, they don't do anything without a strategic roadmap piece sure. or, or a blueprint or a marketing uh-huh. plan or whatever. They don't know how to live life without sure. steps. It, it, there has to be a breakdown in the strategy. There right. has to be a breakdown in the plan and they're so resilient. And so uh, attorneys will always be an entrepreneur as human beings. Sure. Honestly, oh, yeah. and especially when we're so close to the dream and the dream has to work. There is no plan B, right? And, yeah, and they'll uh, sacrifice everything, everything at all costs to do that. And it's like, what are you doing? Is it really 
that's all you care about is that level of, I made it from a place of uh, superficial notoriety, some money. Look at what you, what destruction you left behind you to get there. Yes. What is, what do you think is wrong? Why do you think we have, again, we have so many problems in our society as a whole because people in positions of power and influence are doing the very same thing. We have generational trauma that never gets resolved. Do we have some growth and movement for certain things in this country? I say it all the time. Yes, we've had legislation that has moved some things, but I'm, it's nothing's optimized in this country. And we keep fighting over the same problems because people don't stop to address themselves and actually face their truth. And we have literally just perverted the world around us. So anything outside of that, this is why attorneys, high achievers, entrepreneurs, they love strategies and systems. You know why? Because at the end of the day, it's about control. And human beings need this level of control to feel safe in the environment they're in because we are afraid of the unknown. And the only way you're going to really unleash all of your potential all at once so that you can access it as a high burning fuel source for your, your performance and your success is when you can yield to the unknown. I yielded to the unknown of the world of bull riding. I was scared, excited, turned on. I had no idea what was going to come. My very, very first ride, I slipped, fell off it after three seconds of the ride. The bull fell on top of me, turned around on my leg, looked at me right in the eyes. And that brief moment, that stare between that wild animal and myself changed my life forever. It gave me this newfound awareness that the only way I'm going to improve right now is if I'm willing to face this type of scenario over and over again until I finally have achieved self-mastery where I don't live life from stress. I know how to manage and optimize external stress. I know who I am at the core. I'm confident in a very healthy way. I'm healthy. My relationships are thriving. Every aspect of what I stand for moves people before I even open my mouth. So going back to that strategy. I get it. You can have all the strategies you want, but at the end of the day, those strategies are still you trying to control the unknown. And you have to surrender and yield to the unknown. And you have to learn how to create from ambiguity and white space, not from stress and chaos. That's the difference. Mm. And and talk to us about that. Yeah. I love all that. And I, uh, I definitely, um, uh, apply all that in my life. I, it was a game changer. Once I just let go and I, I just couldn't live in stress and all the time like that as running three different businesses. I had shingles. I was just, I, but I, but my mentor, my guru told me that's the name of the game. That's how you, you do it. And mm -hmm. so once I resolved to that, and then let's talk about how this helps you to become and optimize and what it means to be an unoptimized leader yeah. and what it means to be an optimized leader and how this plays in with stress, because I'm telling you, and you know, this people just believe that it's just part of it. You're yeah. always yep. going to be stressed out. There and is. you and I both know, no, that's not, I, I would, I would venture to guess that the people that really truly have a definition of success, all those areas you listed out, they probably have very little stress in their life anymore. Uh, especially after working with me. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's just the, the, the blunt truth. Uh, I, again, the work that I do is a framework. Uh, it's in a relationship dynamic with my clients. There's no program. There's no process. There's no system. There's no linear path. I don't give you a plan to follow. The relationships I have with people are where I can actually get them to be the most vulnerable. And when they're the most vulnerable, I, I get every aspect of their life exposed and no, no stone is left unturned when I do my work. And I have curated a network of experts from different industries that work in tandem with me. These are my resources that I bring into the, the container that I have with my mm. one leader. And holistically, we approach every aspect of their life to optimize it. Now, helping someone is one thing. When you say I help someone, what you're doing is you're providing the service and you're providing them an opportunity to move the needle, to change directions, to make more money, to grow their company, to be this and that. But when it comes to optimization, think about that word. Think about mm -hmm. the power behind the word help versus optimize. You can even sense that right now. Yes. When you optimize every aspect of who you are 
in the relationship you have with yourself at any given moment is always at the top. It is never detrimental. You know how to utilize and manage the normal stresses of life and running businesses and dealing with other dynamics optimally. You see, that's the thing. That's the key is there is going to be normal, quote, I would say stresses, right? You're going to have these moments where you're like, whoo, I'm running something. It's growing. I got all these people I'm going to manage. That's normal, but that is not the type of stress I'm saying that impacts your performance. That's the type of stress you should know how to utilize as a fuel source to keep moving your performance even higher, mm-hmm. keeping your people on the right track, motivating your company to, to love what they do. You know, that keyword transformational leadership has been really Googled over the last half a decade. And I found a story and I talk about it in one of my, um, one of my other paper I wrote too, is why you need to get unfucked. And I use that word very specifically as a way for people to really ground into the understanding of your life being optimized requires this. It's the five key contrasts you need to understand to take yourself and your organization to the next level. It's on my anti-retreat page that they can find there as well. And it talks about... Sam Walton, you know, of the the founder of the Walmart, who was considered a transformational leader because he would go around the country thanking people for working for the company. Well, that's not transformational. That's transference. That's another going back to what we talked about earlier. Yeah. Wow. And you have to, you know, who you are and how you show up should automatically make make people feel very connected to the culture and may are very motivated to want to work for you or in the company. That is where real leadership comes from. Not what you say, uh, how you bark orders, the money you have in your bank account, your celebrity status are all superficial byproducts. I'm talking about who you are at the core, facing your own truth, finding out what you're capable of without all of those convenient filters clouding you, and getting outside of this like you said, your mentor goes, that's the name of the game. And I call BS. That's not the name yeah. of the game. That is just, the, the again, the compensated version of what we believe to be because we have no other insight on other ways to do things. We have people that are out in the world doing like a, uh, the, the coaches and consultants we talked about, Molly, it's, is they create what's called the learn and copy method. That is the mimic, the, the innate mimic nature of human beings. When we're little, we mimic our parents. We have to learn how to navigate our world to develop ourselves. And then eventually break off, start building our personalities. But that natural part of us never really just goes away. And what has happened is our personal development industry, our leadership development industry, the, this hundreds of billions of dollars a year spent on this is built around that very notion of how do I sell to that aspect of a human being so that they want to copy my methods. They want to look at my blueprints. They want to follow my programs that I've curated, that I've created for my success. I'm going to sell it to thousands, if not millions of people to keep my bottom line growing, to keep me in the top so that people can feel like they're getting some form of, of growth and success. And then they become these like celebrated, like gurus or performance coaches, et cetera. And we have people that are just basically regurgitated drones of that very specific influencer. And I'm saying, well, what are we doing here? And, that, and again, that has its place. I understand that. I'm not knocking it and saying, stop all of that and get rid of it because we're never going to eliminate that, right? We're never going to get rid of those, those things. People need that stuff because there's different levels of capacity of who we are as human beings. We are not all at the same level. We are just not. We might all be human beings as this skin, flesh, blood, and bone stuff, but our capacity to perform is completely different. That's why we have different systems, classes, et cetera, is because we have to have contrast to grow. If we don't have contrast, we don't grow at all. But when it comes to you being optimized, there is a whole new world you need to step into for that to even be possible. And you have to be willing to do the most unconventional, most unorthodox, most like challenging stress. You have to recreate new stressful situations for you so that I can actually eradicate the very things that are holding you back. And then what comes out of that as a byproduct is more money, more opportunity, more success, more notoriety, uh, better, better health, more freedom, less fear, so much more because the byproduct of it is what has happened for you first and foremost. And again, going back to what we, you just talked about is gotta, we have to be willing to step away from the, the trying to map things out. Uh, you mm-hmm. can't map human performance out. You just cannot do it, despite how much people want to sell you on the idea that you can't. And you know what I love most <laughs> about, I think that you said that is a key. Tell me if I hear this right. Mm-hmm. It's almost like those old school commercials from the <laughs> 70s of 
firefighters have stopped, drop and roll, so to yeah. speak. And yeah. I think that's a hard part for human beings, for professionals, even if you're on some level of track, like you have this train moving and, but you know, the pieces, like you said, yeah. tell the truth of what's not working. How do you navigate the like stop to adopt the, get uh-huh. the clarity? Like how, uh-huh. how, how do you do that without everything it. blowing up? I love that. That's a great question. You know, and I get asked that all the time is when you work with these people, how do they integrate you into their lives? Because they're so high paced, high responsibility. And I I look at them and go, there's no, it's not about even asking how that's even possible. Realize you don't have to stop your life. The point I'm making is it's all about slowing yourself down enough so that you can be grounded in that awareness. Give yourself that if you need to use certain steps to slow it down the train just enough to kind of recreate a new awareness for yourself, I understand that those steps might be necessary. So when I, again, the example is when I come into a a client's life, when if I work with, let's say uh, a professional athlete or a fortune 500 CEO or a hedge fund director that I've worked with, their life doesn't stop. I want, I want to watch, I'm in their life with them. I'm watching their life happen real time. And in that real time is where I provide those challenges, insights, awareness. I had a public figure I worked with in personal development. I watched him from stages. Every time I was at one of his events, I was behind the stage. I'd come out in the audience. I'd watch I'd pay attention. I listened to him and he would come in the back after during his break when he had other speakers. And I would literally tell him the reason why you feel this way and why you're not getting the response you want here. Is, and I'd share with him the blind spots I'm recognizing. And we would literally do some work right there in real time. And he'd go back out on stage and would shift the entire dynamic of the audience because who he is and how he was performing came from the internal world of stress nervousness, et cetera, that we were still eradicating. So how someone can do that is like, I'm not saying stop your life. Now, maybe you might need to. Sometimes you might need to take a step back and go, you know what? Let me hit the reset here. Let me give myself permission. If I know I'm capable of just being this badass and and making money and doing my things, then you should be able to do that. Even if you take a break, you should be able to come right back to the table and do that. It all depends on your capacity, who you are, where you're at, what you're running, and what resources you're bringing in to support you. And if you have a resource that can meet you where you're at in real time, you don't have to slow down the way you think you might have to slow down to to develop newfound awareness. I didn't slow down in war. Any soldier, any veteran, any SEAL, whoever you talk to, my buddies are special ops. My brother is special ops. I was with the 101st Special Division. Everybody that will tell you, we go to war, there is no slowing down. You don't get time to slow down. What you do is you learn the philosophy is slow is smooth, smooth is fast, fast becomes lethal. And if you can apply that to your performance Mm. in life and business, slow is smooth, smooth becomes fast, fast becomes lethal, lethal meaning uh, the operative word of success, more impact, more money, if that's what you want. Those byproducts become even more profound and more beneficial, more optimized because you are willing to stop trying to rush to get somewhere. And that's what most people are doing, especially lawyers, uh, public figures. They are constantly trying to get to the the so-called result and they are overlooking and bypassing or trying to circumvent or hack their way there. And they're wondering why nothing is actually feeling the way they want it to feel. And if you wake up every single day, constantly wanting to grind for more and figure out where, how do I do more? How do I have more? Then there's a compensation factor, a dysfunction that's happening there. And you are literally missing the entire point of why you do what you do, who you really are. And you're actually infecting people in a negative way because that is how you are showing up. If you think that you don't have an effect on those around you, you're crazy. Does that help? (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) It absolutely helps. And, and, And I love that because I can... Attorneys are very literal. Oh, he said, I need to stop everything. Right. I'm going to stop listening to these two. You know, it's it. And that's the reason I asked the question. And in the answer, I, I love that because so often when they are doing whoever coined that term, the hustle sure. a couple yeah. of years ago, I want to choke them when I find them. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, well, know. you can but, hustle to get, you know, to, like I hustle when it comes to, you know, the things I want to write. I'm writing a book right now. I'm writing a chapter for another book. I got asked to co-author. I'm hustling in my own way, but it's so smooth. It's such a flow. It's part of my, my lifestyle. See, I live my life where it's like, I don't panic and I have to schedule every hour has to be this way and I have to follow. If I don't follow it, I failed. It's like, what are we doing with that aspect and that mindset? That's, that's absolutely detrimental. 
when you can integrate into your life, you'll realize that things get done without you having to stress over them. That's what I'm talking about. And you're right. Don't take it so literally all the time. I'm not saying stop listening to uh, Tim Ferriss. If you enjoy the conversation, what I'm saying is don't take literally what these influencers and these people are saying to you as absolute and the only way for you to achieve success. Because what you're doing is trying to take on their energy and their uh, understanding of things. What works for them at the end of the day is not probably good enough for you to be optimized. It might help you, but it's not going to make you the best you. Right. And yeah. one thing you said that was so key in closing, I know we've gone a little long here, but I think so, it's such an important conversation of paying attention to how you feel. I, before we started recording today, I told yeah. you I led a half day law firm retreat and I have them do a bunch of homework or what have you. And the um, attorney came up and he's like, listen, I just want a number one. I don't give a shit about the money. Mm -hmm. We're making money enough that I feel comfortable. Could it be more? What have you? But he's like, I'm exhausted. I'm like you said, I'm in back to back to back to back meetings. And I don't like how he used that word. I don't like how I feel in my team. They don't feel good either. Right. And I will tell you this, Molly, that's, that's fantastic. Here's what happens. We have this back to back incessant push of our daily schedules as high achievers. What do we do to deal with that? Well, because we have created this idea that we don't have time or space for anything other than relief, we chase relief. We chase the cycle of that roller coaster. I have a stressful day. I'm going to go uh, drink, drink a bunch of whiskey or beer at the end of the day to kind of cap off my busy day, my stressful day. I'm going to relieve myself and then I'm going to get back into it the next day. And then it just becomes this like never ending a uh, Ferris wheel of of chaos and that energy, that chaos, that, re- that 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 revolving door of pain and suffering spills out and infects those around you. We're not you see. I heard someone tell me one day they're like, "There's," and I love it with this whole political debate we got going on with everything. Going, I don't even want to get into that. But my point is, everybody looks at at human beings as my decisions and who I am don't affect you, and that's absolute asinine garbage. We are not cars. We are not these two vehicles sitting side by side where there's no impact that we have on one another. We have a dynamic connection with those around us, which is why people can walk into a room and say, Ooh, I don't like the way this, this feels in here. This guy's vibe, this girl's vibe is off. Well, if you can feel that walking into a room, how can you negate the idea when I say the energetics of performance and the energetics of who you are, how you operate in your life directly affects those around you detrimentally. If you operate at a high level and you're optimized, their lives are better. That's the thing is I'm saying is if you're on a place of a CEO of a company and you are like literally thriving in your life, your relationships are optimal, you feel great, you're healthy, but you, yeah, you might have a busy schedule. I'm telling you the performance of the people around you will improve naturally just by sheer presence because the energetic implications of what you're actually basically spewing out into your team or those around you have an effect. If you are dying of cancer, if you don't think your people are going to feel that when they're working for you, they're going to tell something's off and this doesn't feel right here. And the job doesn't feel exciting anymore. I want to quit. I want to see like your, your lawyers, people yeah. are quitting because they feel the stress of everything going on with their boss. And they're like, you know what? Something's not, but they don't know how to articulate it and neither do the, do the leaders. Right. So going back to your point, it's, it really comes down to who you are at the core facing and battling through your unresolved stresses you will be able to optimize how you deal with your schedule, regardless of how busy it is. You will stop relieving yourself and you'll find resolution. That's the key. Yeah. And I'll just say in closing, one thing I cannot let go, we chase relief. And I know our time is up here, but I want to say something when you talk about they go get a whiskey or go do whatever to relieve. Some of our attorneys that I work with, they're like, well, I don't drink. I don't do that. Let No, no, no. This isn't your time to go to sleep because this is what they do. Their relief is to go ahead and spew a bunch of emails that are like, why'd you do this? Why'd you do yep. that? At the end yep. of their day, after they're jam packed, it might yep. not be going to the bottle. It might not be going no, to the you're right. bar. It, it might, might not be meditation. Be, it may not be yoga. Yeah, Absolutely. But, you know what you just said right there is powerful. And I want to leave everybody with this is what happens is people do not know how to hold energy at all whatsoever. So when they are bombarded with stress, what do they do with it? I have to put it somewhere. And when you are optimized, that is energy. You know how to uh, transmute yourself and you learn how to create boundaries so that you don't 
put it in places it does not belong. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know about your child's situation because you couldn't make the meeting today. But the fact is you feel safe and comfortable enough. You can just spew that on me because you are having a hard time holding that. You need healing. You're just going to put it wherever you can. And that's what you're right. They do. They project it outwards and then they go, ah, I feel better. But what about the people you just did that to? Do you think that's going to optimize your business? Do you think that's going to make you a real leader that people want to follow? Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, I think that's a fantastic, Wiley. Oh my goodness. I'm going to have to bring you back. This was- Absolutely. I would love to. I mean, we could go on and on. I love this. This is yes. fantastic, Molly. Absolutely. Thank you. Tell Thank you. our listeners how they can connect with you and we'll put it in the show notes. Sure. Of course. Like I said at the beginning of the show, time to erupt. It's very easy to spell time to erupt.com. We'll take you directly to that character index, do a little self-assessment, see if you're in a position to be optimized. Uh, there's so much different content I put on that website after 12 plus years and not having anything uh, digital. It's like finally putting me into this one dimensional space, took some time, but it's there for you to start grasping what it is that I talk about. They can do that, or they can go to linkedin.com as you did forward slash Wiley McGraw, which my name is spelled there on that website as well. And we can uh, create a connection there as well and have more uh, contact and people can start reading more that I'm putting out. And uh, yeah, if anybody feels free to uh, reach out via email or, or shoot me a text or call. I'm, I'm open to that too. I do not turn away conversation whatsoever. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We'll have my pleasure on, on the um, show notes in addition to your website and please take advantage of that assessment on the um, landing page that Wiley just spoke about. Awesome. Thank you, Molly. Thank you for ah, being our yeah. guest today. So for all of our listeners today, if you'd like what you hear on our podcast, please feel free to visit our website at hiringandempoweringsolutions.com. So we love that you are listening to this podcast. Please drop us a line with any feedback, suggested topics you'd like to hear. And absolutely, we'd love to hear about your victories and your win in regards to creating entrepreneurs in an entrepreneur's world. 